Hey everyone, it's Jolt here. Welcome to Visual PKM. In last week's video, I talked about randomness and connection in Zettelkast and how trains of thought emerge over time. Then I got this comment from Reisky, who said that to him, Zettelkasting just feels too heavy, too structured, that it stifles creativity. That's why I like to think about my notes not as zettles I must connect into logical sequences, but as Lego blocks I can use to build anything I imagine. I'm not laying the tracks for the perfect trains of thought. I'm running a Lego factory. When I read a book or listen to a podcast, I think of it as constructing a scene from a Lego set. You get a box of Lego and first build what's on the box. That's like reading the book and understanding the author's message. But then you take it apart and add the pieces to your Lego collection. And you use your new and old pieces in new creations. I think about every note, every icon as a Lego block I might use later. Lego invites play. You don't build the same thing every time. You pour out the pieces on the carpet and follow your imagination. That's how I want my note taking to feel. But how does this work in practice? I talk about this in chapter two of my upcoming book, Sketch Your Mind. The chapter is called The Lego Approach to Playful Thinking. If this metaphor resonates with you, I think you'll love the book. Pre-orders are open now and I'd love for you to check it out. You'll find links in the video description. I've set four simple creative constraints for myself. First, if an idea resonates, I don't just write about it. I create a simple illustration. The act of creating an illustration serves both as a filter and a tool for understanding. Let's see how I would capture this very idea. I recommend you follow along. I start by opening a blank drawing and searching for an icon. My go-to for icons is my own icon library and only if I don't already have what I need do I go to external sources. This way I reuse my icons and they become connectors of ideas in my system. Let's use the filter coffee icon. This is an icon I modified from flat icon. If you don't already have something similar, open flaticon.com and search for filter coffee, select the icon, choose the style and copy the PNG. Creating an illustration for an idea is a filter because it's easy to copy and paste an interesting sentence from a book, but it takes effort to create a sketch. It's also a tool for understanding because in creating the sketch I must think more deeply about the message. Translating the abstract idea into a simple drawing forces deeper engagement. Second, I use standard size fonts and icons in all my illustrations. Just as every Lego block has standard studs and cubes so they always connect, I do the same by creating visual notes that tile well. When you create a presentation, a storyboard or a book on a page, consistent font and icon sizes make a world of difference. Your work will look more professional. Notice how the two callouts both used font size small. Now let's also add a title to our card, something like Sketches, Filter and Clarify. I use large fonts for my titles. Third, I capture my illustrations on standard sized cards. The constraint of a post-it note or index card focuses my attention on what's truly important. Just like Lego has different sized blocks, I don't use just one card size. I have smaller and larger ones. I've created a size guide that I keep in my stencil library. We won't go into all the tricks today, but 
this is my core tool for creating cards that tile well. Adding a frame around your card makes it feel even more like an index card. Finally, I limit my color palette. This speeds up the process since I don't need to think about colors and ensures the cards harmonize when used in storyboards or presentations. Look at my book on a page summary for Atomic Habits to see what I mean. I recommend starting with three colors, one main color, one accent and one secondary for details and lines. Over the years I've added a few more, but I still mostly stick to those three. Once your visual is ready, it's time to flip the card over and add notes and links to the back. In Obsidian Excolidraw, right click the tab and select Open as Markdown. For now, let's keep our notes simple. Sketching ideas is a practical approach for creating atomic notes in a Zettelkasten system. Notes on the back of the card help articulate the idea and create connections to other notes. Additionally, writing taps into a different dimension of thinking. When you sketch and write, you become an ambidextrous thinker. Writing is your right hand, drawing is your left, but you need both to be efficient at most of your tasks. If you found this quick introduction insightful, I encourage you to explore cohort 13 of the Visual Thinking Workshop. We'll read Anne-Laure Lecomte's new book, Tiny Experiments, first reading it the way Anne-Laure built it, then we'll break it down, illustrate key ideas, and reassemble it as a book on a page. You'll be left with visual Lego blocks that you can reuse in your own thinking with notes that actually invite play. Registration closes next Saturday, so now's the time to jump in if that sounds exciting. Check out the link in the description. Thank you.